One thing that's becoming a bit of a trend for me is Stills Hoglander's right back in Rick Tockett's doghouse. It looked like at the start of the year, oh, we've taken a step. We're, we're past this now. Three-year deal. This guy's going to bring great value. He's going to play in the top six. You know, Hoglander's staple to the fourth line. He's off the second power play unit, and he ain't doing much in the minutes that he is getting. So our subject of our poll question today is, will Nils Hoglander be traded for help on defense? I was expecting, I wrote this one, I was expecting people to A, vote no overwhelmingly, and B, you know, start trashing us in the comments, be like, oh, this is such a stupid poll question, all that stuff. 51.2% of voters say yes, I think Nils Hoaglander will be traded this season for help on defense. 48.8% say no. One of the closest poll questions we've had in a while, and I really wasn't expecting it when I wrote it. Yeah, it's been interesting to already see the decline in his ice time, right? For seven games, he was averaging nearly 15 minutes per game, and especially at 5-on-5, five five, his ice time was significantly higher than it was last year. But in the last six games... The splits are pretty dramatic. He's barely touching over uh, 12 minutes per night in those last six contests. I, I hope that Nils Hoagl Hoaglander can figure it out. I I'm a believer in his talent. I really think that if you give him an extended opportunity in your middle six, that he's going to be a dynamic driver. And I, I think the Canucks were a little bit too quick to pull the plug on him. Uh, in the t in a top six role after uh, the Carolina performance, I thought that was a little bit harsh. So I wonder how much of of that is also just I want to see him get a consistent opportunity at some point, rather than one mistake and you're you're back on the fourth line. And, and this is where um, you have to try and build your confidence from. We'll see though. I mean, we know that the Canucks are going to need to add a legit top four defenseman. Uh, at some point before the trade deadline, they don't necessarily have to use Hoaglander as a trade chip because they, of course, still have their own picks. They can dangle their first rounder. But if they are at a point where they sour on him organizationally, he is an option to consider. Yeah, like, dude, a team that is trading with the Canucks and is looking to retool or rebuild or whatever, like, you go down the list, most of those teams would love to add a cost-controlled Nils Hoaglander at three years, three million. Most of those teams would love to have that, and that doesn't even kick in until next year. So, again, like you think about the team here tonight, the Calgary Flames, you're trying to get Rasmus Anderson. How much would the Flames love to add Nils Hoaglander? The Seattle Kraken, for example, they're not even rebuilding. They just love their middle six wingers. How much would the Seattle Kraken love Nils Hoaglander? I think that's a pretty expansive list of what the Canucks would be able to, uh, or who, excuse me, who the Canucks would be able to trade Nils Hoaglander to. But yeah. Uh, I think it just, you look at it and you see the diminishing role. You see the point totals, like he hasn't scored since that game against Philly. I We know how this ends with other guys, and I think context matters here, Harm. You talked about the Carolina game. When you and I talked about that, the game after, we were saying, okay, like Hoaglander's getting his punishment, but he'll be back soon. He hasn't been back, and he's not going to be back right now, at least. Like We're not seeing it. We're not seeing... Hoaglander in that spot we're seeing Pia Suter get the opportunity and is Pia Suter going to make a mistake to lose that chance because I don't think so I don't think that's going to happen if the Canucks do go down the road where at some point closer to the deadline they are considering all right maybe we'd consider using Hoaglander's trade chip before they do that I want to see him get an extended opportunity in the top six just to know for for certain you don't want to end up in a position where you move him at the deadline before you've given him a chance to see if he actually is a top six player, because then you, what if he blossoms elsewhere? He's on a reasonable cap at even when his extension next season kicks in. And um, you don't want to end up regretting, oh, like look at what he's become. And we didn't give him that long leash and that long opportunity in our top six. So that's something that I'd be keeping in mind if, uh, if I was in the Canucks shoes. And we've done this, we've done this before as well right like we've done this before where we talk about a Nils Hoaglander trade and the thing we keep saying is well let's make sure the Canucks aren't going to regret this one because he might blossom elsewhere I just think we've seen how it ends with Tockett and some players when they don't work out on the defensive side of the game we've just seen how this story ends and look this if if there wasn't the context of Nils Hoaglander being scratched in the playoffs right then I think maybe this is a bit of a different story, but it's not. Like, this is a player that has been in the doghouse before, looked to be coming out of it at the start of this year, and he's right back there. So 
We'll see. We'll see how this ends. But someone in the chat also bringing up the idea of like Marcus Pedersen coming back the other way. Pittsburgh probably would love to add a young player rather than a you know prospect or a distant future. Like a player like Nils Hoaglander going back the other way would make sense for a team like Pittsburgh. It just it would. And and we don't need to keep talking about it. I know you don't want to talk. One about more it. point. No, sure. so like one more point I wanted to make too is if you're trying to ice the best team possible to win a, win a Stanley Cup this year, even if Nils Hoaglander is on your fourth line, he makes your fourth line really, yeah. really good. So At 1.1 sub- million too. And if you subtract that piece, like when contending teams are, are trying to add at the deadline, a lot of times they want to trade futures because they don't want to take anything that's adding value to their current roster. It's different if it's a player like Kuzmenko who wasn't really adding value. But even now when we're talking about Hoaglander and yeah, he's been a little bit up and down at the start of this season, he's still adding value. And it's a luxury to have a player like that on your fourth line, especially come playoff time. Look at what happened in the second round last year where Brock Besser gets hurt and they were leaning on Phil DiGiuseppe and Ilya Mikheyev in top six role. Like depth matters. And like that would be another consideration for the Canucks to keep in uh, keep in mind. Do you want Nils Amon there or Nils Hoaglander there? I think that's a good way to put it, and we will leave it right there.